So we'll get set up. We got a helicopter. We saw him. Go to our checklist. We're going to do a before takeoff. All right, so our doors, my left door is latched, and so is the right door. Caps handle, pin has been removed, and it's verified. Shoe belt, shoulder harnesses, I'm secure. Air conditioner, it's off. Fuel quantity, we're on the right tank. It's confirmed full. Fuel selector is on the fullest tank. Fuel pump, it is on. Mixtures are rich. Flaps will bring those to 50%. We'll verify we got a light. Flaps and flaps. Transponder, it is squawking at 1200 autopilot. We'll just check that real quick. I'm just going to go to the heading mode, make sure the autopilot disconnects. And let's do that again. We'll check the right side disconnect, and it disconnects, and we'll retrim the airplane. Nav radios and GPSs were set for direct Brainerd. Cabin heat and defrost, it's set. Brakes are held. We're going to bring the power to 1700 RPMs. We're going to check the alternator by turning on a few things. I'm going to bring the power up to 1700 RPMs. Uh, there's approximately 1700. Let's go ahead and check the alternator. I'm going to turn on the pitot heat nav and landing light. They're all on. Making sure I don't have any enunciators and making sure that I'm holding a load, which I am. So that seems to be working properly. We'll turn off any excess that I don't need on. Okay. And then let's check our magnetos. I'm going to go two clicks to the left. Checking the right magneto. I'm going to go back to both. I've got about a 40 RPM drop. I'm going to go to the left mag. Check that one. And it looks like I got a 40 RPM drop. And I'm going to go right back to both. So they're timed nice. And uh, good mag drop. Okay, power's coming back to 1,000 RPMs. All right, everything looks good, where that should be. Come back to the checklist. And we'll finish the checklist. So the alternator's been checked. Voltage has been checked. The pitot heat, it's off. Nav lights are off. Landing lights on. Magnetos are checked left and right. Engine parameters were all checked. Power levers back at 1,000. Flight instruments, altimeter is set. Everything looks good. Make sure that's set, and it is. Flight controls, we'll check our flight controls, make sure they're free and correct. And they are. Trims are set for takeoff. Autopilot is disconnected. And we'll do a normal takeoff off of runway 36 as we head to the west towards Brainerd, Minnesota. So normal takeoff, we're going to do brakes release, power lever. We'll add full power. Check our engine instruments. Elevator control for smoothly rotate about 70 knots. Through about 80 knots, we'll bring the flaps up. Set our climb checklist in there. So we'll check, go to our engine page, monitor the airplane on the takeoff. All right, everything looks good. Okay, traffic. Cirrus 347, Cirrus, depart and runway 36 will be a left turn out to the west. Okay, traffic. All right. So we'll do a normal takeoff. And on a normal takeoff, we're going to advance the power nice and smoothly. We might use a little bit of differential braking initially to make sure the airplane holds the center line, but then we're going to drop our feet down and we're going to hold the center line with the use of the rudder. So here we go. Okay, power is coming full. Okay, nice and smooth. You don't need to push it forward fast. Steer with your feet, stay on the center line. And okay, I got full power in there. So right about 65, I'm gently going to start rotating the airplane to 70, and the airplane just nicely comes off the runway. You don't need to haul back on the yoke. Let the airplane fly itself right off the runway. Okay, flaps are coming up, and we're going to continue to accelerate the airplane straight ahead. Okay, got a good engine. A little bit of bump here and there. Through about 400 feet, gears up, power set, flaps are up. And any excess electrical, I could turn it off. 
There's 500 feet, CAPS is available, and we're going to start a left turnout as we come through 700 feet above the ground. Proceed on that crosswind. Okay, traffic, uh, Cirrus on a crosswind. 3-6, heading to the west. Okay, traffic. All right, so we're going to keep climbing the airplane until we find some smooth air. Should happen pretty quick. All right, climb checks. Power set, flaps, they're up. Mixtures. I'll lean those as necessary. Engine parameters did look good. Fuel boost pump, it is still on. Next checklist. Yeah, we're going to continue to climb the airplane. We're going to go up to 4,500 feet for a VFR altitude since I'm going VFR. What a beautiful day. All right, I'm going to lean it out just a little bit as we continue the climb. Through about 4,000 feet, it should be closer to about 24 gallons per hour in the fuel flow. How do I know that? Because we have max power fuel flows right over here on the right-hand side. That's why we use that. Have a little bit of a tailwind. Okay, we're just passing. 4,000 feet for 4,500. Airplane's nicely pitching over and leveling off. I just engaged the autopilot, turned on the nav. I'm sorry, I went to indicated airspeed altitude. And uh, she is just leveled off. Okay, accelerating nicely. We're going to pull the power back. percent power. Okay, traffic or your one one five zero extra got back taxi three six And we're just leaning out the airplane. Serve a little fuel. Blue the approach, Cirrus three four seven zero mil. Cirrus three four seven zero me Duluth. Yeah, westbound forty five hundred feet over to Brainerd. Why don't we get advisories? Affirmative. Here, seven three M. Squawk four five seven zero. All right, four five seven zero on the squawk for seven zero. Now we're at forty five hundred feet. SR twenty two. Here, seven zero. We have a radar contact. Uh, about 12 miles west of Cloquet, I'll two checks, Duluth altimeter 29 or 83. 83, right. We're at County Airport, due to a few lower, I'm eight miles to the southwest, I'll be transitioning off the field to the north. Well, we just, uh, we're about 56 miles from our destination, so we'll start briefing right now, and uh, we'll select Brainerd. And uh, before we do that, let's take a quick look at the weather and see what we got. Winds are 030 at 14 knots. So I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll jump on the ILS for runway 34 for the fun of it. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll do the We'll do the ILS 23 and then we'll do a circle to land to runway 5. Sound like a plan? All right, we'll do that. All right, so 
chart, we'll select the chart, we'll fill Brainerd, and we'll put in the ILS-23. I'm going to display that chart. And uh, we'll do a quick brief here, and you guys can follow along with it. So we've got the, uh, the ILS for runway 23 up here. And right now we're direct Brainerd. Uh, but shortly here, actually, since we're VFR, I'm just going to load the procedure. Select approach, ILS-23. And I'm going to put LaRue in there. We'll just go ahead and activate it now. We'll just go direct to LaRue. So we'll see that change and move to our destination for LaRue, where we'll do the procedure. Okay, traffic, Warrior 50, extra returning left cross, left 36, departing the pattern to the west. Okay. So we're coming into LaRue. Um, we'll hit LaRue approximately 3,000 feet, and then we'll start a right-hand turn to 231 degrees, then back inbound. Looks like the localizer frequency is 1099, so I'm going to put that in there twice, the top and the bottom radio. Okay, ADF is required for procedure, but we have GPS, so we can identify LaRue. Okay. Looks like uh, ASOS is 12677, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there, 12677. And then I'll put the Unicom frequency in there, which is 227. Minneapolis Center, 11805, we'll probably talk to them next and we'll get the handoff. So I'll put that in the number two, I'm sorry, number one radio standby. Prince Radio, we shouldn't need to talk to them, 2365. Localizer 1099, final approach course is 231. Glide slope at LaRue is 2976, which is 1752 above the ground. ILS decision altitude is 1424 with a 200 foot height above touchdown. Airport elevation is 1232, and touchdown zone elevation Here's is 1224. I'm going to give you two frequencies for Minneapolis Center. First one is 118.05, that's located at Brainerd. If that doesn't work, try 127.9, or that was located at the loop. You're kind of in the middle of both of them right now. All right, we'll give my shout on both uh, 27.9 or 1805. We'll see you in L7, sir. Okay. All right, airport elevation. All right, let me see if we got that. Uh, missed approach is climbed to 2,100 feet, then climbing right turn to 3,000, direct to LaRue, locator, outer marker, and hold. We're going to remove the labels. ADF required, use local altimeter setting, which we have. If not received, use AV, uh, Aiken altimeter setting. Pilot controlled lighting is 22.7. And MSA is 3,100 feet. So, looks like 3,000 feet through the procedure turn. Then once we're back inbound, we'll start a descent down. We're looking for a pappy on the left with medium approach light with sequence flashing lights. And 2,100 feet. Um, if we have to go miss, we're going to climb straight ahead to 2,100 feet. Then up to 3,000 right turn direct to LaRue and hold. Ground speed for the missed approach point of the localizers, uh, 3 minutes, 11 seconds if we lost um, everything except for the localizer. We could use the time. So, as of right now, it's a, probably won't need that. All right, straight in landing minimums, straight in ILS, 1424, height, uh, decision altitude with a height above touchdown, 200 feet, and we need a half mile. Um, and if the approach lights are out, we're well, going to use three-quarter mile. But in this case... I guess we decided that we're going to do a circling approach, didn't we, to runway 5. So in that case, we're going to come across all the way to circle to land with local altimeter setting. We're going to use uh, category B, which we are, 1760, and 528 feet is the height above touchdown and one mile of visibility. So we're going to do a circle to land to runway 05. All right. So far, so good. Minneapolis, Cirrus 347, Sir, I'm checking out with you, 4,500 feet. Sir, only a minute, 2,900, bring it open, 2,985. 2,985, Roger. All right, before landing, seatbelts, one hour, secure, fuel pump. Set, mixtures are set, flaps. They're set, not a pilot. We'll leave it on for now. And Minneapolis for 3470 Sierra Romeo. Is anybody between us and the airport? Here's 347 Sierra Romeo. There is no known or observed traffic between you and the Brainerd Airport at this time. Radar service terminated. Squawk VFR. Frequency change approved. We'll talk to you later. All right, talk to you later. VFR. Thanks. 7 Sierra Romeo.
Rainer traffic, Sears 347, Sierra Romeo, SR22, we're about uh, eight miles just to the east of La Rue, or about 15 to the uh, east, and we'll be uh, inbound for the ILS 23, Circle Land, Runway 5. So we're going direct LaRue, we're in descent. A couple miles prior to that fix, we're going to slow the airplane down. And uh, do the procedure turn. Okay, we're coming up about four and a half miles from LaRue. Continue the descent. Once we hit about three miles, I'm going to reduce the power. Slow the airplane up. Okay, so I'm going to start bringing the power back now. Let the airplane slow up nicely as we come across LaRue. Okay, two miles from our initial approach fix. Once we come across LaRue, we're going to do our 5T checklist. All right, throttle. It's set. Okay, we twisted to the inbound as we proceed outbound. We're setting our heading bug to the outbound heading. Turn in the airplane. Time, we're going to go outbound for one minute. So once we get a beam, our fix, which will be just off our right hand side, LaRue, we'll note the time, which we'll see appear here on the Garmin 430. bring up our bearing pointer to help us identify LaRue. Okay, so once we get 90 degrees a beam at that point, we're going to see the timer start. And there it goes. We'll go up on for one minute. Printer traffic, Cirrus 347, Cirrus LaRue outbound. ILS 23. All right, here we go. Okay, right turn. As we turn inbound, I'm going to go ahead and bring my flaps to approach. My boost pump is on, my mixture is rich, and my fuel is on a good tank. Approach is armed, glide slope is armed, and we're just going to let the airplane do its thing and intercept that inbound course. And it is doing it. It's capturing the localizer nicely. Got the airplane slowed down to about 100 knots. That's right where we want to be as we proceed inbound. And everything is really set up for landing. We're going to descend down to our MDA of 1760. And then... We'll 
set that. We'll just bug that altitude so we know where we're going to land. Rather than the missed approach altitude. But a lot of times I'll put in the missed approach altitude and set that. But it's a nice VFR day, so we'll just bug it so we know what it is. Rainer traffic. Cirrus 347 Zero Mills coming up on a five mile final. We'll be uh, joining a left downwind. Or five mile final for runway two three. We'll be joining a left downwind for runway five. Okay, glide slope is active. I use the power pitch roll technique. So right when we capture the glide slope here. The airplane's going to start pitching over, which it is. So I'm going to do power and do a reduction. We're pitching the nose down. And we're turning if we need to turn, but we don't need to. We're just kind of coming straight in. Okay. Whatever power required to maintain about 100 knots on the approach. Going down to 1760. Got a pretty good tailwind. We got about a 27 knot tailwind, so that's why we're not going to land on runway 23. So that's going to put us at a little higher rate of descent, meaning we're going to have a lower power setting on the approach. We're doing our best to maintain roughly 100 knots as we get down into the turbulence. Might have some variations. Okay, we're 500 feet above minimums. As we continue. So as we get to our minimums, we'll just disconnect the autopilot and advance the power nice and smoothly up to about 40% so that we can maintain roughly our 100 knots throughout the circle approach. Okay. A couple hundred feet above minimums. So, we're arriving at minimums, we're going to disconnect the autopilot. Now we're going to level off the airplane. We're going to advance right up to about 40%. And then we're going to go ahead and turn about 45 degrees to the right and begin that circle as we maintain our 1760 on the altimeter. Okay. At the same time, we're going to go ahead and adjust our power as necessary to maintain a 500 knots. We're about 500 feet above the ground. Rider traffic, Cirrus joint left downwind for runway 05. We're using that 45 degrees on the heading just to get us away from the runway so that we have time to do the circle as we maintain our altitude of 1760. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn and we're going to parallel the runway, probably for a good 45 seconds or so. All right, everything's looking good. We're not going to leave our MDA until we are seeing the Vazir Pappy. Okay, so we're doing the circle land. We're just to beam the touchdown zone marker. We're still at 1760, holding about 100 knots. Okay, we're going to start the left-hand turn. We're still going to hold our altitude on the circle of the land until we see the Vazir Pappy and know whether we're high or low on the glide slope. We're not going to add any flaps until, see, the area is clear on the right. Okay, it looks like I'm high, so I can start the descent because I can see the vas of your pappy now. Okay, starting the descent, turning in the, turning in my last notch of flaps. I'm reducing power as I rotate the airplane into the wind. 
Okay, so I'm just going to crab the airplane into the wind. Do my best to hold the center line. We're a little bit high, but that's okay. That's why we uh, stay at our altitude until we can see the Vazir Pappy. As we get down in here, we're going to hold that crab technique. Two reds and two whites. Right in here, I'm going to add some right rudder. A little bit of left aileron as I get down here by the runway. Power coming back to idle. A little bit of a balloon there, but I'm just going to keep the airplane banked into the wind. Set it right on the center line. Okay, hold the nose up. And a little bit of left aileron into the wind as we slow the airplane down. So it's gusting up to about 20 knots, 25 knots. So, so that's what kind of what we're feeling as we land the airplane. All right, we're going to turn the airplane off at Alpha 3. Taxi over to the terminal building. Printer traffic, Cirrus 3470 mail is clear on the runway, Alpha 3. Okay, we're going to stop doing after landing checklist. We're going to bring up our flaps, go to our checklist page. After landing, power lever is 1,000, fuel boost pump is off, flaps are up, transponder is standby, and lights are as required, and pitot heat is off. Next checklist will be a shutdown. Well, folks, if you liked what you saw today, um, please subscribe to our channel, Venture North Aviation, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Um,